Okay, I am here with the transcripts that are downloaded uh, from the i-uv website for the identity hearing of Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. Uh, this is the United States District Court for the District of Columbia. United States of America is the plaintiff versus Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. Uh, both of these are in all caps. That indicates that they're both corporations. Uh, CR number 17531. So this is the transcript of removal hearing before the Honorable Deborah A. Robinson, United States District Magistrate Judge, Friday, August 4th, 2017. Uh, appearing for the plaintiff, uh, Lisa N. Walters, Esquire, U.S. Attorney's Office, Violent Crimes, Narcotics, and Trafficking, 5554 Street, Northwest Washington, D.C., 20530. For the defendant, David Walker, I think that's Bose? Boss? I don't know how to say that. I'm just going to say Bose. Federal Public Defender for the District of Columbia. Interesting how, how that's in all caps and U.S. Attorney's Office in all caps. So that tells me that those are corporations. All right, well, I'm thinking Barbara DeVico is the court reporter. Federal something court reporter. Court reporter something. Um, Anyways, room 6509. Here's a phone number for her. That'd be uh, that'd be interesting to follow up with that and get the actual audio tape that the court reporters use uh, as they go back and verify the entire transcripts. <clears throat> All right, proceedings. The deputy clerk starts off. Says this is the criminal case 17531. United States of America v. Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. Isn't it interesting that, that now that's in mixed case? <clears throat> and so is this. Lisa Walters for the government, David Bowes for the defendant. Pretrial officer is Andre Sidbury. This is an identity hearing on removal. <clears throat> now look, what I take from identity hearing on removal or on a removal is they're trying to establish whether Heather Ann Tucci is the all caps <clears throat> corporation of Heather Ann Tucci uh, and they need to make that identification before they can legally extradite her and that's what I think hearing on a removal is all about hearing about an extradition uh, you know this is legalese here so uh, Let's see, I am three minutes into this, so I'm going to try and keep this video about 15 minutes, and I'm just going to read because I don't think there's any audio version of this uh, court transcript yet, and I'm just going to give you my thoughts from my experience as I, as I read through this stuff, and, uh, you know, I'll just make as many videos as it takes to, to get through this whole thing. It's some uh, 70 some pages I believe 76 pages all right mr. Bose good morning your honor court replies good morning is everybody ready to proceed Ms. Walters yes your honor mr. Bose your honor I do have some representations to make before we get started your honor uh, court replies, let me ask you to come to the podium, please. I can hear you, but we have a more accurate record when counsel speaks from the podium. Thank you. Mr. Bose, thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, as the court may recall, the last time we were here, I informed the court that Ms. Tucci would be seeking to represent herself in this matter. Since that time, I've had a chance to meet with Ms. Tucci. It is my understanding that she still, that she does still want to go forward with representing herself in this matter. We had discussed the Ferretta case 
and the inquiry that I understand the court would probably be asking Ms. Tucci, and she's prepared for that inquiry at this time. <clears throat> court replies, thank you, Mr. Bowes. Mr. Bowes, while you're at the podium, may I ask you to please articulate your view regarding the nature of the inquiry that the court must undertake? Your Honor, it's my understanding what the court needs to make is a finding that her waiver of counsel is knowing and voluntary, that she's been advised of the dangers of proceeding pro se, and that she has, I believe the word in Ferretta's that's used is that she's literate enough to understand the nature of the proceedings. It's quite clear to me that she's going to meet all those requirements should the court inquire about. And then there's this uh, double hyphen here, and it, that seems like uh, Bose got interrupted by the judge. So anytime it says the court here, I'm, I'm thinking that this is Deborah talking, this is the judge. May I ask you please for your proffer with respect to what you advised Miss Tucci Giraffe on the dangers or perils of representing herself? You've indicated that you did advise her, but, you, but are you able to be more specific, please, without intruding upon privileged matters? Yes, Your Honor. I explained to her that obviously any statements that she were to use during the nature of this identity proceeding could, in fact, be used against her in the criminal proceeding that's pending in the state of Tennessee. It also could result in her continued incarceration during the pendency of any continuance of the identification hearing in this case. That, I think that's important. That, that's an interesting point. Uh, I wish I could highlight this. I don't see a way to do that. Let me see. Uh, can I get a edit? Select? Find? Hmm. Alright, well, I'm going to read it again. It could also result in her continued incarceration during the pendency of any continuance of the identification hearing in this case. Uh, pendency means awaiting for a decision or in the act of deciding. Um, so during the decision process. So uh, basically this is saying that uh, could result in her staying in jail uh, if the identity hearing portion uh, draws out. And that could, that's just going to add to the time that she spends uh, locked up. All right, and the fact that she is not, although she is a trained attorney, she has not practiced in a courthouse ever be in this courthouse ever before. Wow, let me read that again. And the fact that she is not, Although she is a trained attorney, she has not practiced in this courthouse ever before. I think she has a pretty good understanding of the legal system. Although she is not obviously a member of the bar of D.C. or in the Federal Circuit. <clears throat> the bar of D.C. Hmm, that's interesting. <clears throat> I thought the bar was just the bar itself. This makes it seem like there's different bars. The bar of DC. And this stands for what? <clears throat> British something registry? <clears throat> All right. What is your proffer with respect to the guidance you provided, the assistance you provided, Miss Tucci Giraffe, regarding the parameters of today's hearing? <clears throat> Your Honor, and then he gets cut off again. In other words, <clears throat> that the sole purpose of today's hearing is for the court to make a determination with regard to whether or not she is the person who is the subject of the arrest warrant <clears throat> and the indictment, and perhaps to follow up, that in making such finding, the court cannot entertain any discussion from either the government or Ms. Tucci Giraffe regarding the merits. What did you advise Ms. Tucci Giraffe regarding those matters? Your Honor, for the record, I explained to Ms. Tucci that we would not be able to discuss the merits of the case about whether or not the strength of the government's case concerning the case in Tennessee, whether or not she has any viable defenses at this point, 
that the only issue for the court to decide is whether or not she is the entity or individual that the District of Tennessee is seeking and that we would not be able to introduce evidence on any other issue except for the identification issue. That's interesting. That the only issue for the court to decide is whether or not this is a contraction here. She is, so she's the entity or individual that the District of Tennessee is seeking. Wow, entity or individual. Hmm. What is your proffer with respect to whether Ms. Tucci Giraffe acknowledged your statement regarding the advice? She, she did acknowledge my advice, Your Honor. Or assistance regarding the purpose of today's hearing? Yes, yeah, she understands that this is an identity hearing today and that this is not a trial on the merits or any pretrial motions in connection with the charges that are pending now in the District of Tennessee. Should the court grant Ms. Tucci Giraffe's request or more properly, should the court accept her waiver of counsel? What will your role be? In other words, will you serve as standby counsel or will it be your request to be permitted to withdraw? Your Honor, I think that that's a decision that would be left best that would be best left for Ms. Tucci to make. I am certainly an officer of the court. Huh, an officer of the court. Huh. And I've been initially assigned to the case by the court. I am here today. I can be here for the hearing today. If it turns out that she, well, let me back up. I've explained to her that she certainly has every right to represent herself in this case, but the court certainly has the right and authority to appoint standby counsel. Now, whether or not, one, she accepts the standby counsel, and two, whether or not she wants to have standby counsel to be me, I don't think, given my conversations with her, that I can tell you what, what my position is. My position is what my client wants me to do. So if it turns out that the court wants to appoint standby counsel, but my client wants someone other than me, then I would ask the court to appoint new counsel for, or new standby counsel for, Ms. Tucci. If it turns out that Ms. Tucci is satisfied with me as standby counsel, I am ready, willing, and able to serve in that capacity. Uh, very well. That was the court's next question. Are you prepared to serve as standby counsel? Yes, if that's my client's wish. With all the qualifications that you just articulated, yes, Your Honor. Very well. Thank you very much, Mr. Bose. Ms. Walters. Good morning. Thank you, for, thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, the government concurs with the defense counsel's request for an inquiry, specifically, that the, specifically the specific parameters of what the court should inquire. And once the court makes a decision, the government is prepared to turn over Jenks as discussed at the last hearing. Turn over Jenks, J-E-N-K-S, and this is in italics. Jenks in italics, wow. And the court, and once the court has made a decision, the government is prepared to turn over Jenks, capital J-E-N-C-K-S, as discussed at the last hearing. Huh. I'm not quite sure what Jenks is. But I'm going to pull up a window here and find out. Hmm. All right, well, here is... Here's Wikipedia. Whoa. I'm going to get that back up. All right, I want to. There we go. All right. Get a little bigger for you guys. The Jenks Act, <clears throat> 18 U.S.C. Section 3500, provides that the government, the prosecutor, 
is required to produce a verbatim statement or report made by a government witness or prospective government witness other than the defendant, but only after the witness has testified. Jenks material is evidence that is used in the court of federal criminal prosecution in the United States. <clears throat> it usually consists of documents relied upon by government witnesses who testify at trial. The material is described as inculpatory or favoring the United States government's prosecution of a criminal defendant. The Jenks Act also covers other documents related to the testimony or relied upon by government witnesses at trial. Typically, the material may consist of police notes, memoranda, reports, summaries, letters related to an indictment or verbatim transcripts used by the government agents or employees to testify at trial. This also includes a witness's grand jury testimony if the witness testified at trial. After the government's witness testifies, the court must, upon motion of the defendant, order the government to produce any statement of the witness in the government's possession relating to the subject matter as to which the witness testified. The court's denial of such a motion by a defendant is, re is reversible error. Although the court need not order the disclosure sua sponte. I don't know what sua sponte means. And I'm not quite sure. The court's denial of such a motion by a defendant is reversible error. Hmm. The usual remedy for failure of the government to produce the documents is a mistrial and dismissal of criminal charges against the defendant. Okay. Well, I guess that's what the reversible error is. Uh, so if the court denies such a motion, then the judgment can be reversed because of that error. Although the court need not order the disclosure. Well, let's find out what this means. In law, sua sponte, the Latin meaning of his, her, its, or their own accord, or suo moto, on its own motion, describes an act of authority taken without formal prompting from another party. <clears throat> the term is usually applied to actions by a judge taken without a prior motion or request from the parties. Hmm. Okay. So it's when the judge does something when, before somebody has made a motion to request the judge to do that. Okay, so Miss Walters for the prosecution here <clears throat> is saying that once the court makes the decision, the government is prepared to turn over Jenks as discussed at the last hearing. Okay, so apparently at the last hearing, uh, Heather must have requested uh, the evidence that, that they used, and she used this Jenks Act to request that, and she says that they're prepared with that information. Okay. Uh, let's see, the judge continues. <clears throat> Are you speaking of Jenks with respect to the witness who will be the first, who will be the first witness you call? That's correct, Your Honor, and also the government exhibits for the identity hearing today. Very well, thank you very much, Ms. Walters. Bear with me, please, while I confer with the deputy clerk, and a discussion is held off the record. All right, so that's the end of page seven. Wow, we're almost 20 minutes here, so I'm just going to... Uh, Leave off at that and I'll be back with the next video starting uh, where we left off.